more diverse school staff member that makes racist remarks? No, but the superintendent can. Can you require implicit bias training for teachers? Absolutely. We can definitely implement implicit bias uh, training for our educators. Um, and we can ensure that they also participate in culturally appropriate uh, trainings to ensure that they best serve their students. A lot of our teachers aren't from our community and so it's important that they get this training so that way they can better serve our students. And you heard of the old saying, show me your budget and I'll tell you what your priorities are. So you can actually ensure that there's a budget for this type of professional development training for our educators. Speaking of budget, how much control do you have over that? We approve, uh, we pass, and as a superintendent, they're the ones who ensure that our goals in that budget are implemented. And how big can these school budgets get? Some of these budgets range from several million to 100 million to even in some states in the billions of dollars. During the 2015-2016 school year, elementary and secondary public school funds in the U.S. totaled $706 billion, with 47% of it coming from state sources and 45% from local sources. Can a school board protect students' free speech, say, for protesting or kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance? So just because you're a student, your rights don't stop at the school gates. So your, their right to free speech and to even kneel during a pledge is definitely protected. School board members can definitely be a direct support to ensure that students uh, understand and know that their rights are protected. What about curriculum? What power do school board members have when it comes to ensuring that students are learning from diverse texts? So school board members definitely have an influence and a power to ensure our students are exposed to culturally relevant curriculum. As a school board member, we can introduce a policy to mandate ethnic studies be required in order to graduate high school, for example. And so as a school member, we definitely have a say so in terms of what our kids are learning. With the pandemic, we're seeing a lot of debates about whether or not schools should reopen. Is that a decision that's up to the board? Yes, thanks to local control, school board members are the ones that decide whether or not to close or open schools. However, that could come at a financial cost depending on your state governor. Let's talk about sex ed. States differ nationwide on how sexual education is taught, if it's taught at all. So how much say do board members have in this conversation? Remember, you set the tone for your district. And so you can definitely introduce resolutions and or policies to ensure that your district is working with your state statute to ensure that your students have access to comprehensive sex education. Again, it varies by state what the state statute is, but as a school board member, you definitely have an influence in terms of what our, your students are taught. Well, we've covered just a handful of important topics in the school system, and it's clear that school board members have many other decisions that are vital in education. But when you look at the U.S., the median age of school board members is 59. So what is your advice for young voters when it comes to voting for their school board members? You need to remember that the school board members that you select are literally shaping the minds of our society. So make sure that they're engaged, make sure they're active, make sure there's someone who's actually gonna do the work and not just sit there and show up and vote and rubber stamp everything. Welcome, 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 welcome everyone to another edition of the Community Soldier Podcast. Today we have Mr. Chris Davis, who is running for JPS School Board here today. How you doing? Good, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to run for Dexon Public School Board? Yeah, so uh, yeah, my name is so, Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, proud, product proud product of JPS. Product of JPS. Um, lifelong, lifelong resident of Jackson, 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 Jackson County. Jackson County. Uh, I got two boys uh, in the, boys district, in the now, district now. And, and I really started looking at the school board um, because of them, because they're in the school. I, I had a, a personal uh, situation with the, with the district and with the school, and I started paying attention to the school board and started uh, seeing some areas that, that I thought we could do better in. And uh, so I decided to throw my, throw my name in there and, and make a difference. Nice. 
you mentioned that you thought there were some areas that we could address as far as the school system. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so specifically yeah, so with specifically the school board, with the board um, um, just, just a lack of responsiveness, a lack of, responsiveness, a lack of, a uh, lack of uh, compassion, compassion and, and communication, communication that we currently that have, we currently with, our have board. with our board. Um, um, you know, as, you as know, a school board member, member, you need to recognize, need to recognize that the community, the community voted, you there voted you there to be a representative, be a representative of, them. of them. And if you're not and willing, to, you're listen not willing to, them, to listen to them, then something needs to change. Needs to change. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, it is very important that we have someone there to represent um, the people when it comes to dealing with the school systems and getting uh, the information across. So you, you mentioned voting. Let me ask you, can you tell the people uh, why it's important uh, for people to vote, especially in local elections like the school board? Yeah, so, yeah, so all your, all local, your local, elections local elections are the are most important, the elections. important elections. These are the folks, are who, the folks who are going to decide, decide what what, what books your, what kids, books are reading, your kids are reading, um, um, what the playground, looks, the playground like, looks like, what the culture of the school is going to be. Gonna be. Um, and, and speak it out um, to that. I mean, even going to city council, city council and county council commission, and commission, these local these elections, local elections um, th um, these are people these who determine, people what determine what roads get repaved, roads get repaved and where your tax where dollars, your tax really, dollars go. really go. So your local elections your local are the most important ones. I agree. I agree because they really impact our lives the most, right? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what would you say to someone who feels their vote doesn't really matter or doesn't make a difference? Um, um, attend a meeting. Attend a meeting. Whether it's, Whether school, it's school board, school board, city council, city county, council commission. county commission. Attend a meeting. Attend a meeting. Fix what these fix people are doing. These people are doing. And, and recognize, recognize that, that you have a say have in who, a sits, say at who sits at that table. Yes, I agree. So recently we did have a school board meeting and I saw a video, a clip of you speaking at that school board meeting. Um, and now we all know what's going on, but just can you tell us why you felt it was important for you to be present during that situation? Yeah, so, yeah, so <clears throat> as leaders, as, um, it, we shape the culture of the district and the kids that are um, looking up to us. And so how can we as parents and leaders in the district and the community um, try to teach our kids values such as respect? Um, and, and they look at what's going on at the highest ranking leadership in the district and, and they see, well, if this is okay for them to do it, then I can do it. And so um, with that, you also have a lot of, you know, distraction. It, it, that particular meeting, that was the eve of a school year for the district. And our district's underperforming in so many different areas. And that's the, that had to be the focus of, of the eve of the school year, you know. And so um, really just making sure our, making leaders, sure our leaders are held accountable, 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 accountable is really why I want really to, be there, that I want night. to be there that night. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And I feel that sentiment 100%. Um, speaking of which, that leads us down to our next question. We're really just trying to help people that aren't familiar with the whole process understand. So. We know the role of the school board, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the role, can you explain what the school board does and why it's so crucial to have strong leaders in these positions specifically? Yeah, so the school board, yes, the school board, is, board is really a check and really balance, check and balance uh, of, of the administration. The administration. So, so the school board the sets, school board the, sets the, vision the, the vision of the district, of the district. Uh, whether it's curriculum, um, whether it's curriculum um, policy, um, policy, um, um, Budgetary items. budgetary items and so and so we we make sure that, our, make sure administration that our administration is, is, is 
fulfilling that vision, that vision. and, and um, um, holding them accountable, holding them when, accountable they when they don't. When they don't. Yes, yes, you definitely have to have that checks and balance, right? So the school board essentially uh, is the checks and balance for the system. So we understand like why we need a school board. Why do we need a school board like in place to make those decisions? And like what would happen if we didn't have a school board helping to make those decisions? Who would be the person that would ultimately decide what happens inside of the school. Well, I think you well, you, you, you can find yourself find in almost yourself like a, 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 a dictatorship. 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 Um, so, um, so you would have one person have one essentially person superintendent, superintendent making the, make the all decisions. All decisions. Realizes that the superintendent, the superintendent is a hired is position. A hired position. The school board is an school elected board position. Is an elected position. So the school board is there, board is there to, represent to represent the community back to the, community, back to the, administration. To the administration. So, so if, you if you don't have the school board there, a proper school board, a proper school board, proper school board you, you, you could have an individual have just an doing individual whatever, whatever, they want, whatever they want and not having to listen, to, having the to, listen to the community. With the school board there, the, board the, way, there, it work, the way it should work is that parents and the community can come to the board and say, this is this is how we want to see our district. See our district. And, and we task you, we with, task getting you us there. with getting us there. Okay. Um, so how does the school board actually have the power to hold the district accountable, like in those areas, such as student performance, budget, and safety goals? So the school board, so the school board has, board the, has the, I guess the power, if you will, power, if you will to, to um, curriculum, curriculum, set policies, set policies. Um, decide um, decide what dollars are going to be spent within within limits limits um, um, and the school board the also, can, school board then also can then hold our administration, hold our administration accountable, accountable through, through um, um, evaluations, evaluations um, um, hiring and firing and and and, 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 and that's, that's pretty much that's pretty much how the school board the school can, board can shape, the shape the culture of the school. Of the school. Yeah, so the school board collectively has the power to hire and fire um, certain positions. Within the Absolutely. School. Absolutely. In, in, in fact, the, in only, fact, position the only position is the superintendent. Is the, superintendent. the superintendent, yes. Yep. Okay, thank yep. you for correcting me on that. So the school board has the main uh, say so in basically how our schools run. Um, Absolutely. Which is a Absolutely. very challenging task uh if if you were to think about uh what challenges school boards typically face in balancing the needs of students teachers and the overall districts uh, what would you think those things would be so number one is, number is one budgetary is budgetary so, so in jackson in jackson state, michigan, state of michigan michigan um, our most recent our education, most recent budget, education budget, budget did not include, did not a, include a Per, per pupil, per pupil funding, raise. funding raise. So I think we're so capped think at we're around ninety two hundred dollars a student. A student. Uh, we also uh, lost. We also lost. Um, um, we went from we three hundred some billion dollars to twenty six million dollars in the mental health and public and, public and school safety school budget. Safety budget. Um, so in Jackson so Public, Jackson we're gonna lose a million dollars. For mental health, for mental and, health school. and school. Wow. So, a so <clears throat> a million dollars. A million yeah. dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, how do we, so how do we continue continue those, those programs? Programs, if the money's not there. So, the school board there. really so is, board tasked really is tasked with, with making sure that, making sure that we're, we're not we're not losing essential, losing programs, essential programs, programs, even though we're losing though essential we're losing dollars. dollars. Wow, it's a difficult, difficult task, all while managing all of the other needs within the school system um, at the same time. And then that, that is a very difficult and important task. Um, let's spend a little bit of time talking about you and your vision. You know, we want to give this platform uh, to you so that you can tell the people about uh, maybe some of the things that you do different or some of the issues that are on your radar. 
Yeah, so, yeah, so um, um, parental engagement is number one. Is number one. Um, um, you, you really you have, you to, really create have to create a culture where, culture where parents feel parents comfortable, comfortable being, being able to come able into the space, space and say, this, saying, is, the this is the issue that I'm having, and this is the support, this is the support that, I need, support from that I need from you. And right now that relationship, right now, that relationship is broken. Is broken. So, my, so number one goal my number one goal would be repairing that relationship. That relationship. And I think and a I couple think, things uh, that we can do to change that change is number that one is, is hosting is host town halls town outside, outside of the school, outside board, school meeting. board meeting mm-hmm. right now the school, right board, now, meeting, school board meeting it's a one-way, it's a one-way communication. communication as a community, as a community member you come member, you come you get five minutes get five minutes and the school board can't school talk board back can't to you talk back to you so there's no open there's dialogue no open dialogue as a school board member school I'm, board I'm, member, committed I'm, I'm committed to hold it outside town halls we can have an open open discussion that's a two-way street two-way street um, additionally, um, I would want to see a social media, social media platform, platform for the school board, the school board, um, where it's a Facebook um, page Facebook or, Instagram, or Instagram, where parents can, where reach, parents out can reach out to reach out to the, the president. We would probably have the president, have the school, president board school board running those social media those pages. Social media pages. Um, and um, and during, COVID, during COVID, we allowed, we allowed com- the community the to community to have a, um, have a, um, a voice at the, voice school, board at the school board by sending their, by sending their comments in comments via, email. via email. And we stopped doing we that, stopped after doing that after COVID. So I would want to bring so that back. Bring that back. So if somebody's at, so work, somebody's at work or they just can't make it for whatever, whatever reason, reason, their voice can still be heard by the school board. Great idea. Great idea. All great ideas. I like especially uh, the town hall idea as a person who does a lot of advocacy in a lot of different areas in the community. Um, I think it's very important that we allow the people uh, an outlet to be able to speak and, um, you know, get answers heard immediately, you know, and we're not expecting them to have all the answers immediately, but at least um, give the people some type of acknowledgement uh, to let them know that they're, issues and their concerns, their voices is heard. Uh, I have seen uh, a few instances uh, within the JPS system where parents have had issues and they've gone to the school board in the proper fashion. Um, And almost every person that I've dealt with in that situation uh, left the situation unhappy with uh, the school board's response. Uh, to their particular situation and I, I do think that there needs to be more transparency so i definitely uh, like the facebook uh, idea because i mean a lot of people are on technology facebook is the new newspaper right we know that yeah so yeah i think that the school board should uh, start digitizing some of their things that they have going on be more present in that way as well reachable so I think those yeah, are all absolutely, good things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think is like the major, like a major issue that you can point out that's going on with our schools? And how would you go about addressing that issue? So I think right now, so our, right now our most pressing most matter pressing is going to be our efficiency rates. Number one, we're only graduating we're only 80% graduating of our kids. Of our kids. All of those 80%, of those 80% only, 12% only 12% are at a are at grade, grade level proficiency, level proficiency in, math. in math. Only 24%, only 24% are, at grade are at grade level proficiency in reading. In reading. Um, you, you, um, you, you compare that to our closest our district, closest Western, district Western, Western, they're at a 64%, 64% proficiency, proficiency in reading and 40% and proficiency, proficiency in math. In math. So really so getting really those proficiency getting those scores up are going to be like the number one priority over the next couple over years. The next couple years. What and I think and I think advocate for that. Sorry. So a couple of changes, so a couple that, changes um, that I'm looking at, I'm looking at is is reversing a policy three one six three one one six. And this policy this says policy that says a that staff a member staff of the district, of the district cannot, cannot speak to speak a, a sitting, sitting board member. Board member without the explicit without permission the explicit of the superintendent. superintendent. 
and I and I want to reverse that policy because because our teachers our teachers are on the ground, on boots, the ground boots on the ground doing the work doing educating the work, our educating kids our and kids. if something's and if working or working, not working not working as a school board school member board i want that member, raw, want that unfiltered, raw unfiltered, unfiltered information information so that's so that that would be my first step is reversing that policy that policy uh, my second step uh, second is step to expand is transportation transportation right now right at now, my house, at where, my I'm house sitting, where i'm sitting if my kids went to high school high school they would not qualify, would for, not transportation. qualify for transportation. Um, um, so I want to so expand the transportation expand into transportation some of the other areas of the city. And I think that's going to really gonna help really with, help um, with attendance, um, rates, attendance rates, tardiness, tardiness which, which if we have more kids, have more kids in, the class, in the class, on time, on time in a safe manner, a safe manner they're going to be more willing more willing. Or, they're going to be in a better position, be a better position to learn, to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and additionally, and, and then additionally, getting, and then getting parents back parents into the back schools, into the schools. So getting that, getting empowering, that the empowering the parents to be, to be um, engaged, in, engaged the in the child's education. education. And that's going to start, that's going to start with, with repairing the relationship the between relationship the community between and the school board. The school board. Yeah. So to engage with the parents, we're definitely going to need to build back that trust between the community and the people who make decisions. Um, because right yeah. now there's yeah. such a, a, a gap between the people and uh, the people who make the decisions. Um, so you're, you're suggesting to bridge that gap in a new way that we haven't seen. Um, Absolutely. What, Absolutely. What type of events or things that you have in mind uh, would you use to bridge that gap with the community well as as, well, as, as a school board member, member um i would start with the town start halls with town halls and i would invite I in other school, in board other members school board members uh, to kind of collaborate with them right with them and, you know let's get more let's get ears and one ears and one and then branching that into branching the schools, that into schools if we can get the schools get to the host, schools more, host more um, um open houses open houses you know, where, where, uh, you know, once a month once or once a, month, a, quarter, once a quarter, you come in, you come in and, and tour the school, tour the school. Um, um, get parents to get come parents in during the school days, see, see, like, see what the classroom's like, see what the experience, what the experience is like, experience is like. And, and really just, and really just empowering that parent to feel, feel welcomed, welcomed into their children's, into their children's education. Children's education. Community engagement and accountability. How can people in the community stay engaged with the school board beyond voting, like you said, such as attending uh, your town halls and board meetings or voicing concern? What is your vision? I think you even said some of that for making school board meetings more accessible to the public, especially for working families. Yeah, so again, so uh, again uh, Facebook, Facebook, getting a Facebook page. Facebook page. Uh, there's a lot of people, on, a Facebook lot of people on Facebook today. Today, allowing, allowing parents, and community, to community to email in their um, public, um, public, public comment, and and really, really being an open, being school, an board open member, school board member, where where this is our agenda, is coming, our up agenda coming up this week. This is this is how I'm planning to, I'm vote planning to vote on something. What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? And then taking that then feedback, taking that feedback, and maybe changing and maybe the vote. Changing the vote, right? Maybe right. I vote, maybe I vote one way, but then I hear from a couple parents, couple parents, and I and I say, you know what? That's that's, that's not the direction we're gonna, 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 gonna go. And then hold your school board member accountable. If ask them, reach out to them. Hey, hey, why did you vote this way on this policy? Policy. And if a school board member is willing to willing to engage with that conversation conversation they shouldn't be there they shouldn't be there Are, uh, how can people get in contact with individual school board members are are their emails posted on the jps website yeah so every school yeah, board so member school has, board an member email, has an email um, um posted on the, posted on the JPS, website. jps website i hear all the time, from, hear parents all the time from parents they, they 
don't ever get a response from the majority, majority of the school board members. School board members. I personally have had a hard time getting responses. responses. So, if you could build the perfect school board member, what values and qualities do you believe are essential uh, for, for building the perfect school board member? Somebody who, Somebody who is, is accountable, to, accountable their actions, to their actions, compassionate, compassionate to the community. To the community. Empathetic, empathetic, um, um, driven, driven, and transparent, and transparent. Definitely agree with the transparency part. Um, we haven't seen that much uh, from my interactions with the school board. Um, it's very inclusive. Nah, it's very like a secret group. Um, I didn't even realize all what the school board did really until recently when uh, Keisha Hamilton became a school board member. I started paying attention to actually what we what they do um, and what the importance of their role is. Um, so I think that a lot of the general public, uh, like myself, we just need basic information, education, um, because we haven't been traditionally invited to a lot of these circles. Uh, yeah, so yeah. We're not uh, used to being a part of these conversations and even knowing that we have the ability to be a part of these conversations. Um, so I, I definitely commend you for the work that you've been out here doing. Um, we wanted to Thank you. definitely Thank you. congratulate you on Community Soldier Podcast for being an outstanding community soldier. I wish you all but uh, luck and success on your journey. Uh, you officially will have our vote uh, in our household. Uh, we appreciate like it. Appreciate we it. See. Uh, we like the fact that you have been willing to show up uh, to the community, in the community spaces. I've seen you personally a few times in, at a few different venues that I've been uh, and I've seen you out here advocating, uh, talking to the people, and actually out here in the community, which I haven't seen from a lot of elected officials. Um, so that definitely means a lot to us in the community. We just want to let you know that we see you working. Um, you have our support. Uh, anything that you ever need, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll always be available, and I definitely thank you for coming on the show. Um, but before you before you go, I just want to give you the opportunity, the floor, to give any last words, uh, anything you want to say before you get out of here tonight. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, first of all, first of all, <clears throat> thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. And uh, really, out really out there to the community is, is take a look at who's on the ballot. Who's on the ballot. Uh, there's, 10 uh, there's ten official candidates. Official candidates. I think there's really about four of us that are really trying to do anything. Do anything. Um, and look at the candidates. Uh, candidates. <clears throat> before you vote. Before you vote. Don't vote for someone because you went to church with them, or because you went to high school with them. High school with them. Figure out. Uh, figure out what their platform is going to be. Platform's going to be. Uh, figure out why. Um, um, just really, really do your research. Do your research. There's, there's candidates, candidates who, have who have already been on the board once. The board once. There's candidates, candidates who, has who has loved ones who loved come, ones up, who to come up to the school, school board every board every month and month and says some says some way out their things. Out their things. Um, there's um, people that there's people that are on the ballot and the ballot we haven't even seen them. Even seen them. We haven't even heard we from them. Even heard from them. Um, you know, I'm looking at all, these, looking candidates at all these candidates as a parent, as, as a voter parent, myself, because you can't vote for can't three, vote school, for board three school board members um, this November. This November. So I have two more votes, two and, more I'm votes and I'm looking at, am I going to vote? Am I going to vote? And uh, I really encourage I really the community encourage to look at Elena Sharp, Elena Sharp, Shannon, Shannon Barbara, Davis. Barbara Davis. Okay. And why, why do you recommend those two? So, so I reached out to, reached all, the out to all the candidates. 
they were the only two the that only were willing, that to willing to share their, share platform, their with platform with me. And um, and, and, and when I reached and out to everybody, I said, everybody, I'm not reaching out to you as a candidate, I'm reaching out to you as a parent and as a voter. And as a voter. Um, in um, and, and, and Elena, and Elena, she's been an educator been for 20, educator years. 20 years. She's been in the classroom. In the classroom. She, knows she knows what works and what, what doesn't works work. And what doesn't work. Shannon has, Shannon has um, a unique vision, unique for, our vision for our district of, of equality, equality diverse, diverse education, education and, and really has, really has um, some, great um, some great ideas to implement, that, implement that, into that into our curriculum and into our policies. And into our policies. So, so those two, those um, two I'm, looking um, really I'm looking at really closely, really closely, right, really closely now. right now. Okay, I definitely. I definitely have to check them out. Um, I'm, I am familiar with uh, Ms. Shannon Davis. I worked with her down at Jackson Housing Commission. So I okay. do know okay. that she is a person that um, is boots on the ground. She understands what's going on in the community. Um, and I think that she will be a good impartial vote, uh, voice. I think the problem with our current school board is we have officials sitting in the seat and everybody just uh follow suit everybody just votes the same uh, we need people that are just not going to be afraid to be soldiers and that's why we call this community soldier podcast uh, because we know that it takes a lot to be different and it takes a lot to stand up and say that you don't agree with somebody with something uh, and we know that it takes a lot to be a person that's committed to change so we're definitely going to be rooting for you We'll, we'll definitely Thank check you. out the other Thank two you. candidates uh, that you mentioned and feel free to reach out to them. And, you know, if they'd like to join the Community Soldier podcast or if you guys are watching, uh, you guys got an invite as well to come up on here and talk. Um, maybe we can get all three of you guys on here one day. That would be nice uh, to bounce ideas off of each other. But yeah, we have, a, um, we have a... Um... We have a candidate have forum a candidate coming up next coming Monday at six o'clock. Is a library downtown. Library down. Okay, yeah, six o'clock next Monday. Yep. I'll, yep. I'll check the calendar and see if it's something. Is it open to the public? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, we're gonna add that to the calendar. Thank you for that. Once again, thank you, Mr. Mr. Davis, for coming on the show. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come through and check us out. Um, we definitely will be rooting you, rooting for you when you have all of our support here at Community Soldier. I appreciate it. Appreciate, I appreciate your time today. Your time today. All right. You have a good night. You too. You too. y'all man we back we back we back community soldier podcast man it's been a real one um once again it was good to have uh mr davis on the podcast tonight uh, we thank y'all for tuning in with us as we build and we grow this podcast sorry for the technical issues that we had tonight we were supposed to stream um, live to Facebook and YouTube with this episode, but for some reason we we're having technical difficulties with the 
streaming app and it didn't connect properly so we're just going to post this video to the site for everybody to enjoy but if you would like to be a guest on the community soldier podcast please reach out to me at justin dot community soldier at gmail.com at gmail.com well that's all we got for tonight y'all y'all have a great night it's been a real one and remember it don't take that Drop the flyer, but stay tuned. Community soldiers.